G'day folks. Well, I've just been having a bit of a tidy, tidy up around here. Moved some engines out of the way. Uh, freed up a bit of space. Not that I have much left at the moment. But I just figured I'd get this old project finished and back together. This is the Westinghouse 110 volt DC generator. And I, quite a few of you have been hanging out to see what's happening with this. And I've been really bad and not done anything on it in the last six months or so. But now that I have materials and things, I can work on it. I've got the rotor and everything re-lacquered and painted. I've just got to polish the commutator bars back up. They're all intact and not badly scored. Um, I've got to finish off making insulators. I've got some more acetyl material to make some insulation sleeves through the casing. I'll replace these old cables. Uh, that's a new cable there. Um, bolt the pole back in after that. I've got new insulation backings and things. Uh, it should come up pretty good. I'm hoping it'll work. Uh, once again, the poles, the whole thing has been out in the weather a very long time. Now, I definitely don't have the money to rewind the whole thing. It's about two to three thousand dollars worth of copper wire just involved in rewinding this thing, let alone the labour. Let alone trying to remake the commutator and everything on this rotor. It's just going to be obscene. So if it doesn't work, it'll make a nice display piece. If it does work, well, that's a very good bonus. I'm hoping it works. But either way, this thing's probably 100 years old at least. It's exceedingly old. It's definitely not a modern design like the smaller one I just found. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those things I'm going to finish off today. Well, not today, but soon. I'm just stripping down the brush gear at the moment. The brushes are worn but still usable. I'm going to pull the brush boxes off. I've loosened off all the clamps and everything. I'll try and remove these brush boxes. I'll clean the whole collar up and make new insulation. I'll polish these brass boxes. All of this is brass apart from the springs and the screws. So I'll polish that up and just install them as they are. This collar assembly will be black. And the insulation, well, I'll go to middies and see what they've got in the way of either heavy wall high pressure heat shrink or some kind of mica insulation. I, I know mica insulation is a bit hard and expensive to find, but that's what they use here. This is all mica, but it's just falling to bits had it. So, yeah, I'll pull all this to bits and we'll try and rebuild it. And clean the rotor up too. Once I've got that pole in place, I can generally put the rotor in. I'll just put some plastic chocks against these poles and just sit the rotor in there and get it out of the way. Then I'll be able to slide the end bell on, line up the bearings and then pull the chocks out afterwards. I just want to get some floor space back. Same with the Morris 1100. Once I'm finished paying for car bits and other stuff, I'll buy a set of rings. I think they're $120 a set. And I'll put the Morris 1100 back together and that'll get a lot more floor space back. And it'll make for another nice running project. Not that I have any shortage of engines at the moment. They're everywhere. But it'd be nice to get that Morris going again. I don't want to throw it in the bin or anything. Yeah, this is the end bell for the uh, the brush end, the business end. I painted it ages ago. I'll take all the masking and shit off it. It's got Babbitt bearings. Well, actually, no, the rear bearing's been replaced with bronze. The front bell bearing is actually cast Babbitt. But it needs a bit of a clean up. We'll scrape all the paint off the mating surfaces and then bolt it together. I've got all the bolts and things and the oil well covers and the oil rings are in there somewhere. There's the oil rings. Just uses these to sling oil around the shaft. I'll try and get them out of there somehow, but I'll do that when the shaft's in place. Get a piece of wire and pick them out. Alright, well I've got the brush assembly apart. Cleaned off all the old insulation, which is just degraded, rusted up. It's 
layers of waxed cardboard which is mostly rust now and a bit of mica probably would have arced through if I loaded this thing up as it was so the actual brush retainer can go into the electrolysis tank tomorrow uh, and the brush boxes I'm just cleaning up on the grinder using a wire wheel coming up beautiful mostly brass except for the spring and the screws remarkably intact they're a work of art that's the actual spring tensioner you got a lever that rotates and you can lock it into position depending on how much tension you want that screw sticking up so the spring isn't going down but that's your brush tension they all work very well and that's sort of what they look like before oh yeah tip of the day if you find the wheels becoming ineffective you can either flip it over so the bent wires which are sort of bent upwards because that's the way it's wearing against it like that so the bent wires are now pointing downward and it gives it a hell of a lot of bite make sure it doesn't snatch the part from your hands and smash it around the housing or pull yourself in or take a worn out grindstone like this cup wheel this one I've worn on the inside which is actually quite dangerous uh, and just dress it like you're dressing a uh, grindstone with a di diamond dresser I'll put my visor down and I'll show you how to do it okay. Just give it a bit of a rub down like that. I know it eats the grindstone, which is already scrap, rubbish. And uh, it just makes a slightly sharper edge on the wires. If I were to flip this wheel over, this thing would be super aggressive. Probably too aggressive to um, wire wheel these brass, brass brush boxes. But for now, that's heaps better. So yeah, keep, keep your old uh, grindstone stubs and worn out bits. They're handy for dressing wire wheels. There we go. The four B's. Beautiful brass brush boxes. Ha! These look fabulous now. The brushes themselves are a bit sad but I'll try and find some replacements. They look good with brand new brushes and everything inside them clean up the screws a little bit a little bit more. The bug zap is going nuts tonight. Beetly things. Lots of beetles. Yeah. Beautiful brass brush boxes. <laughs> well that's a complete brush box and brush assembly. Polished inside and out main cable bolts through there or one of these things I'm going to desolder these little capsule ends and solder them onto the new wires that just gets clamped in a little slotted screw in there that screw there uh, that screw there holds the brush wire and clamp together it clamps it onto the brush assembly or the collar that's the tensioner mechanism there. Not much left on these brushes so I can't tension it too far. I might end up putting some little nylon packers under this lever here so it pushes it down further. There's still an inch of brush left but I think they're supposed to stick up a bit further. And there's tons of travel left on this tensioning mechanism but the spring bottom's out on the end of this screw. The uh, clamp screw. So, they're pretty worn out. But that's complete, polished, clean, ready to go back together. So, that's what I did tonight. So, another step forward with the Westinghouse. So, thanks for watching.